Make sure you watch this video to the very end because you could be at risk of becoming deregistered as an architect. Seven years of education, a lifetime career, and a portfolio of amazing work could all be tarnished in the blink of an eye. In today's video, we're talking about the five do's and five do nots of architecture. Out of all of these don'ts, the second last one is the most serious, like Mike Ross jail time serious. If you get the reference, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let's start with a double header. First of all, make sure you learn from your mistakes and don't punish your clients as a result of those mistakes. Let me give you some examples. First of all, let's say you've priced the job. You've priced it accordingly what you thought was fair and reasonable. The brief hasn't changed, the scope hasn't changed. You've just blown budget horrendously and are bleeding money left, right, and center. Most people would somehow try to flip this narrative, turn around to their client and say, look, you owe me more money for some reason or another. All that's gonna do is upset your client, leave them with a sour taste in their mouth, and then they're gonna tell the next person who asked them about you that you just tried to get as much money out of them as you could, regardless of how good your design was. So just take this on the chin, learn from your mistake, make sure it doesn't happen again, and be humble about the whole experience. If your client knows that you aren't making money on that project, that might be fine, but don't diminish that project in any way, shape or form because of it. You have to remember that architecture is a lifelong career. You're going to be in it for a very, very long time and people's opinions matter. So when you do something wrong by somebody else, you're gonna make an enemy out of them pretty quickly. Your clients are actually gonna be your best marketing. It doesn't matter how good of a social media marketer you are, your clients work of mouth means more than any social media targeted ad. So if you can keep your clients happy, even if you make mistakes along the way, mistakes happen, they need to be rectified, they need to be fixed, obviously, but keep them happy and all will end up working okay in the long run. The second do on this list is make sure you hire as soon as you need the help. If you need the help, don't be a cheapskate, make sure you go out and hire somebody suitable for your position. You wanna make sure to hire the best possible candidate. If this means they're gonna cost you a little bit more money, it is going to be worth it in the long run. You don't wanna save yourself a couple hundred dollars, couple thousand dollars, whatever that number might be, to simply hurt yourself in the long run and most likely pay somebody to do a subpar job that you could do 10 times quicker and it isn't even worth paying them at all. And on that note, don't let your clients down because you're too cheap to hire somebody. If you are so busy, it doesn't give you any right to drag out clients' projects forever. Most architects who are running sole practitioner offices will take on as much work as possible because they know when times are tough, they're tough, and they know when times are good, they're good. But what they don't realize is times are good because the clients have talked about them, they've said great things about them, and times are tough for the exact opposite reasons. Clients have said bad things about them, they've been let down, they've been disappointed. So if you are running a solo practice, make sure you hire somebody so your clients don't end up saying bad things about you because you disappointed them, you didn't email them back, you didn't call them, and you just in general let them down. Third on the do list is actually spend time on your business, not just in your business. So what do I mean by that? Spending time on your business means understanding the fundamentals of it, improving the workflow, improving the processes, and making sure that more people come in the door. So let's say you're manually filling out timesheets. Spend some time, figure out how you can automate the system, how you can get an online timesheet system to be able to save yourself significant time and at the same time, justify your work. If you need to go out and find more clients to bring more work in, make sure you do it. Go to those networking events, speak to those builders, speak to the people you haven't spoken to in months. Even though this may seem like an utter waste of time, isn't a billable activity, at the end of the day, there is gonna be no billable activities if you completely forget about working on your business and not just in your business. Now, if you're still thinking, what do you mean by working just in your business? Well, don't only work in your business. Working in your business means spending 100% of your time focusing on all of your current clients, all of your current work, all of your current billings, and everything that is currently billable and does not expand beyond that. Yes, that is fantastic, it drives the work in, and yes, it has to be done. However, there should be some sort of ratio between billable, non-billable, or in and on your business that is going to allow you to both excel that business and operate that business as best as possible. So as an architect, 
make sure that you spend time on and in your business. Now, all of these do's and don'ts are pretty serious, but the second last don't is the one that you need to pay attention to because it could get you deregistered. The last don't is pretty serious. It'll probably get you killed. However, we're gonna stick to the fourth do first and then work our way into the serious stuff. For the fourth do, you need to have the tough conversations. These conversations aren't gonna be something that you wanna get out of bed and do. They're not gonna be something that you're genuinely passionate about. If you are, good for you, it definitely isn't me. I don't enjoy having these tough conversations, but I know they have to happen. Now, the last don't revolves around money. You do not want to be anybody's personal bank. Now, you might not think you have to be anybody's personal banker as an architect, but the reality is you need to cash flow your life, your business, and people end up relying on you to do that for them as well. As a very typical example, most builders expect a 30-day account. That means you have to produce work for 30 days, you get paid at the end of the 30 days. Those terms and conditions are pretty standard industry-wide, but there is a limit to them. You do not want to be doing work for months and months and months on end for free, never getting paid, that builder going bankrupt, you being so far in the red that you don't have any money to pay your bills, your creditors, your clients, or even your staff, that puts you in the bad books of everybody. Besides from quickly going bankrupt, from owing people too much money, you could very easily become deregistered for things that you have to do as a result of losing this absorbent amount of money. Which quickly brings me on to point number five, which is just as serious as point number four. Don't break any laws. In your personal life, in your work life, it does not matter. I'll give you an example. There was an architect here in Western Australia that unfortunately got drunk, got behind the wheel of a car, hit somebody. This is a criminal offence in Australia, most likely a criminal offence everywhere around the world. Now, did this architect conduct malicious malpractice? Did he do anything that would tarnish his reputation as an architect and his abilities as an architect? Well. No, technically he could still draw and design as well as he always could, but the board decided that his ethical behavior around his personal life wasn't something that they wanted to justify and put the title architect against because it is a registered protected title here in Australia. So this crime from a personal standing point, not a professional one, still led to this man being deregistered. So you do not want to do anything illegal, be it in your personal life or in your professional life, because both could get you deregistered. And I think we should end on a bit more of a happy note. Make sure you do educate yourself constantly and continuously. You need to be educating yourself, obviously on all things architecture, but you want to be educating yourself on laws and regulations as they change. Here in Australia, they're rapidly changing. Every couple of years, there's a new construction code. Every couple of months, there's a new regulation or a new law. So if you aren't constantly paying attention, continuously learning, continuously researching, which takes an absorbent amount of time that you can't bill for, you will end up in deep trouble. So make sure you keep learning and improving yourself every single day. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me. If you love the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next Monday.